I'm not able to do this post-game video with baby doll and little baby doll. We had a family emergency this weekend. So I'm solo tonight. Just you and I. I had to hold it down. Watching the game today solo. So it sucks that I don't get to do it with them. But we're still here. What a fucking game. Holy shit. Is this how it's going to be all year, Josh? You're just going to test my heart? Run me through the mud, run all of us through the mud, scare us to death? Hey, as long as you get the job done and you win, do all you want. Holy shit. What a game. Let's talk about it, okay? Let's just roughly go through it. Quick emotions here. The Giants, look, we go up early 6 nothing, and I think all of us would agree that it's probably inexcusable for the offense to only get six points in, the, in those situations, right? You get the early fumble on the kickoff, great field position. You, you got to get seven. They only get three, right? Then the defense, I believe it was Darnay Holmes, gets the strip. We get great field position again. I'll have to set up for the field goal. I think we all realize and we all know that great teams in those situations make teams pay. But let's be honest about things. The Giants are a young team. They're figuring it out. There's a lot of new moving parts here. So we had to settle for six. We let the Carolina Panthers hang around. And look, the Panthers, let's be honest, they didn't play that great in the first half. A lot of mistakes. Mistakes after mistakes. They're dropping passes, they're fumbling, and even through all that, we're all tied up in the first half. We're all tied up. And I'll be honest with you, at, at halftime, I didn't know what to think. I felt like it was really weird. I felt that even though Carolina played poorly, it's almost like they played better than the Giants. Yet the Giants was winning most of that first half, if not almost all of that first half. So it was a really weird feeling at halftime, right? Which I'm going to talk about the offense in a minute, but because there's something that's really bothered me, but we'll get to it in a minute. So then obviously the Panthers come right out in the first half. They knock us with a silly right over right hand because they go quick straight to lead. And I'm starting to think like, whoa, Last week, we made some great halftime adjustments and absolutely won the second half. And this is how we're going to start this, this week. Kuda, I mean, credit to them because they came out guns a blazing and start the second half. But the Giants continued to find a way when it got tough, when situations got tough, this offense produced, found a way. And the defense, when situations got tough and we really needed them, they found a way. There's no question that our defense today gave up big plays and situations. There's no question. And, and we can all criticize the, the second cornerback position because it felt like whoever was in that spot for the Giants, they tried to exploit all day long. And McCaffrey had a couple big runs, but the totality of what this defense did today was exceptional, was, good, was, a, was a good job. I can accept that performance from this defense. Obviously, I'd love a little bit more of a pass rush, but I'll take what they gave me in the totality of the day. Now I want to talk, this is the part that I want you to listen to carefully because there's still some of you out there shitting on Daniel Jones and I don't think it's right and I don't think it's fair. You geeks out here living with your moms going to the games with flip-flops on. You geeks, you booger-eating geeks. I mean, it's killing me because I got Daniel Jones out there. 
He doesn't have his number one receiver in Kenny Galladay. And he doesn't really have Kadarius Tony because those two can't get their shit together. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with them. I got no clue. I got no clue. We don't know if they're injured. We don't know if they can read. We don't fucking know. But Daniel is being told, hey, dude, the, the, probably one of the most explosive players we have on this team, he's not going to be out there, really. Kenny Galladay, who we gave a bunch of money to, and to be your number one receiver, he ain't going to be out there. Go have fun, bud. Go have fun. And when we needed somebody to win us the game, at the end of the game, who did the motherfucking team turn to? They turned to number eight. No! I've said multiple times that he plays a little robotic. I think we all have. We've all said he plays a little. But we were robotic at the end of the game. We were moving and grooving. So without Tony, without Kenny Galladay, Daniel Jones put this team on his back. And I know it wasn't pretty. For all you fantasy weirdo boogery geeks out there, you emo freaks. He put the team on his back and said, I'll carry the load. You ungrateful sons of bitches. Take your flip-flops off and wear on some, put on some damn shoes. Saquon. Let me give some credit to Saquon. No, no, no question about it. But guys like James are stepping up. How about my boy Daniel Ballinger getting his first TD today? How about this young offensive line? Not perfect, not exceptional, but did the job today. No! You geeks, y'all can keep talking about how special Kadarius Tony is. He ain't on the field. He ain't on the field. You know who's on the field number eight? Ha! Ah. Ha! Ah. Yes! Bring on the fucking Cowboys. I'm ready. Every time we play the Cowboys in the last ten years, it feels like we've had a losing record again. Bring them on! I know and love. We're in the winning business. And if you ain't winning, 